Hi everyone, this Victor here. As you may already know, the US stock market is in a large correction now. At the time of making this video, the S&P 500 is down 8.5% from the most recent peak. The Nasdaq is down much more at 14.7% from the most recent peak. These two indices do not tell us the full picture because many growth stocks are down as much as 50% from their most recent peaks. There are many reasons for this large correction in the US. The first one is the current Russia-Ukraine crisis. Many investors are concerned that this crisis will push the US inflation rate much higher. Second, the US inflation rate is at a 40-year high. And third, the US Fed is expected to raise interest rates much faster going forward in order to tame the high inflation rate in the US. Raising interest rates always lowers stock valuations because companies' future earnings will be worth lesser now when interest rates are expected to increase. In this video, I will talk about what to do in a market crash. I will cover these three topics. First, I will talk about the two major catalysts that will impact the US stock market going forward. Specifically, I will talk about the Russia-Ukraine crisis impact on energy prices and the US Fed's monetary policy tightening that will affect US stocks going forward. Second, what to do in a market crash. I will talk about my growth investing strategy going forward and why I'm not selling my stocks in my growth stock portfolio. And third, when will the market recover? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a premium member. Our goal is to create the best intelligent investor community that will help all our members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. With your support, we will be able to stay independent, hire other outstanding analysts to cover different stocks and create many excellent stock analysis and investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. The first major catalyst that is affecting the US stock market now is the current Russia-Ukraine crisis. Personally, I do hope the war in Ukraine will end soon. I feel bad about all the civilians in Ukraine. No one wants wars. Wars only create more suffering for everyone, especially the civilians in Ukraine and all the soldiers who do not want to participate in this war. The important question is this, how will the current Russia-Ukraine war impact energy and commodity prices going forward? Based on my understanding, the current Russia-Ukraine war will likely have a large impact on crude oil and natural gas prices because Russia is one of the largest exporters of oil and natural gas in the world. Russia is also one of the largest exporters of wheat. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Russia is the world's third largest oil producer, responsible for more than 10% of global supply. According to US Energy Information Administration data, its exports account for 7% of the world market, half of that going into Europe, according to analysts at Raymond James. Russia is the world's largest natural gas exporter and one of the top oil producers. A disruption in Russia's energy sales will have widespread repercussions for the global economy, from hurting European businesses and consumers to hurting customers at the pump in the US. The EU is far more exposed, receiving around 40% of its gas imports from Russia, much of it through pipelines that run through Ukraine, and more than one quarter of its oil. The European Union imports around 40% of natural gas from Russia, and Russia is the third largest oil producer in the world. This means the current Russia-Ukraine crisis and sanctions on Russia will likely cause natural gas and crude oil prices to increase further going forward. For example, when Russia invaded Ukraine, oil prices surged above $100 a barrel. This is the first time since 2014. If natural gas and oil prices continue to increase because of the Russia-Ukraine crisis, the inflation rates in the US and the European Union will also increase. This will be a huge problem because the central banks in the US and Europe are fighting to reduce their high inflation rates. Also, at the time of making this video, the current US CPI inflation rate is at a 40-year high. The US CPI inflation rate is at 7.5% and the PCE inflation rates are 6.1%. These inflation rates are before the current Russia-Ukraine crisis. If the Russia-Ukraine crisis continues longer, oil and natural gas prices will likely increase further which will also increase the high inflation rates in the US and Europe. Here is a Another important development, at the time of making this video, the US and EU have agreed to ban selected Russian banks from the SWIFT communication network. The SWIFT network is the most important network in the world that allows financial institutions around the world to communicate with each other and to facilitate cross-border payments and transactions. According to the Wall Street Journal, the SWIFT network is used by more than 11,000 banks around
around the world in more than 200 countries. Part of the debate about whether to okay a swift cut off of Russia is how to keep open more financial channels to buy Russian oil and natural gas. The EU imports 40% of its gas from Russia. There's also the issue of Western bank exposure to Russia. Money all that would be difficult to collect if SWIFT is unplugged. Foreign banks have about 121 billion in assets owed to them by Russian-based entities, according to the Bank for International Settlements. The EU then imposed sanctions on its main item of business with Russia, buying Russian oil and gas. While the energy sanctions are the biggest punishment that the EU could inflict on Moscow for invading Ukraine, Europe's shortage of alternative energy sources means it can't use it. Around 40% of Europe's gas imports come from Russia, with large economies like Germany and Italy especially relying on it as a supplier. Russia also supplies more than a quarter of the EU's oil imports. According to this article here, EU Commission President said the sanctions will ensure that these Russian banks are disconnected from the international financial system and harm their ability to operate globally. A senior US official said the moves would prevent the Russian central bank from selling its $630 billion in gold and foreign currency reserves to Western countries and is likely to send the rubble into freefall. The impact will be felt immediately, the official said. We are collectively plan to impose measures to ensure Russia cannot use its central bank reserves to support its currency and thereby undermine the impact of our sanctions. Now, I cannot predict the outcome of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. I do hope this war will end soon. Russia's ruble currency and its economy will be impacted the most because selected Russian banks will be banned from the SWIFT messaging network. If many Russian banks, especially the largest Russian banks, are kicked out of the SWIFT network, Russia will no longer have access to the global financial market, and their revenues from exporting oil, natural gas, coal, wheat, and other commodities will likely be impacted a lot. I believe the biggest impact will be global energy prices, especially crude oil, natural gas, and wheat prices, because Russia is one of the largest exporters of these commodities. This means the US high inflation rate will power probably last longer than the US Fed had initially expected. The second major catalyst that will affect US stocks going forward will be US Fed's monetary policy tightening. At the time of making this video, the current US inflation rate is at a 40-year high at 7.5%, and the PC inflation rate is at 6.1%. This is much higher than the US Fed's 2% target inflation rate. Also, these high inflation rates are before the current Russia-Ukraine conflict. To lower the inflation rate in the US, the US Fed will need to increase its Fed funds rate much faster than before to at least three times in 2022. Many economists expect expect that the US Fed will raise its interest rate as many as seven times in 2022. Raising the Fed funds rate will increase the short-term borrowing costs for consumers and businesses. If raising interest rate is not enough to tame the US high inflation rate, the US Fed will have the option to reduce its 8.9 trillion balance sheet by either selling its assets or letting its assets mature without reinvesting them. The US Fed's balance sheet mainly consists of US treasuries and government bank mortgage securities. To help the US economy recover from the pandemic, the US Fed had to buy assets every month to increase the money supply in the US while keeping interest interest rates low. This is known as the quantitative easing program. In my opinion, this quantitative easing program went too far because there is too much money supply in the US economy now. For example, the US Fed's balance sheet was at $4.2 trillion at the beginning of the pandemic. Now it's more than double at $8.9 trillion. This is why the US inflation rate is at 40-year high. If we consider the current Russia-Ukraine crisis, that will likely increase oil and natural gas prices. The US high inflation rate will likely last much longer than the US Fed had initially predicted. This means we should expect the US Fed will likely increase its interest rate much faster going forward. And if raising interest rate is not enough to lower the US inflation rate, the US Fed will reduce its 8.9 trillion balance sheet faster, which will increase long-term borrowing costs for consumers and businesses. In my opinion, I believe growth stocks, especially the companies that are not profitable yet, will continue to be impacted the most going forward, as long as the US inflation rate remains high above the 2% target inflation rate. And if the current Russia-Ukraine crisis continues longer, it will likely lead to higher energy prices, which should lead to a higher inflation rate in the US. This means we should expect there will be more stock rotations from growth stocks to more value stocks, bank stocks, utilities, and oil and gas stocks going forward. Growth stocks, especially the companies that are not profitable yet, always get impacted the most when the inflation rate is high. This is one of the main reasons Berkshire Hathaway had outperformed ARK ETFs by a large margin in the past 12 months. So why I'm not selling even in a large market correction? Two months ago, I made this portfolio analysis video. My growth stock portfolio was at 650000 Now it's at 550000 I also have other personal growth stock portfolios with the same stocks. I'm managing about $1.1 at the time of making this video. The main reason 
for this large job is that many large traders and large fund managers on Wall Street have rotated their investments from growth stocks to more value stocks, banking stocks, utilities, energy, and dividend stocks that will perform better when the inflation rate is high and when the US Fed is expected to increase its Fed funds rate. You may wonder why I didn't sell all my growth stocks and switch to more value stocks and dividend stocks and why I didn't sell all my stocks and keep everything in cash. The answer is simple. I don't like timing the market. I believe time in the market is much more important in the long run. Based on my experience investing for more than 12 years, I realize it's much more important to stay invested at all times through all the market ups and downs and not time the market. Time in the market means you will try to predict what the market will do tomorrow, next week, next month, or even next year. Instead of timing the market, I believe it's much better to pick the right businesses and invest only when they're fairly priced or when they're under value. It's also important to invest for the long term to reduce risks. Outstanding businesses always perform very well in the long run because of their competitive advantage and their increasing earnings over time. I cannot predict what the market will do the next day, next week, or next year, so I always focus on investing in the best businesses that have durable competitive advantage and increasing earnings over time. For example, if you look at my gold stock portfolio here, you can see some of my best investments are Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Mastercard, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Visa. They have become multi baggers because I've invested in them for several years. More importantly, they have outstanding businesses with durable economic modes and increasing earnings. When the market recovers, I expect all the gold stocks in my portfolio will also recover because of their increasing earnings. Benjamin Graham wrote this explaining the difference between pricing stocks versus timing stocks. Pricing stocks means wiring stocks to find their fair interest values, then buying them when they're under value. Benjamin Graham wrote this, By timing, we mean the endeavor to anticipate the action of the stock market, to buy or hold when the future course is deemed to be upward, to sell or refrain from buying when the course is downward. By pricing, we mean the endeavor to buy stocks when they're quoted below their fair value and to sell them when they raise above such value. A less ambitious form of pricing is the simple effort to make sure that when you buy, you do not pay too much for your stocks. This may suffice for the defensive investor, whose emphasis is on long pool holding. But as such, it represents an essential minimum of attention to market levels. We're convinced that the intelligent investor can derive satisfactory results from pricing of either type. We're equally sure that if he places his emphasis on timing in the sense of forecasting, he will end up as a speculator and with a speculator's financial results. What is my strategy going forward even if we're in a large market correction? My strategy going forward is to keep buying more shares of outstanding businesses that are undervalued. Since I cannot predict the market bottom, I will try to buy more shares of outstanding businesses gradually instead of all at once as long as they are undervalued. The best time to buy in is when the market is very fearful because many stocks are undervalued. For example, this fear and greed index shows that the market is fearful. This index was an extreme fear a few days ago when Russia invaded Ukraine. When the market is fearful, many stocks are oversold and undervalued, and if the market is very optimistic and greedy, most stocks are overvalued. I always use this intrinsic value calculator here to calculate each stock's fair interest value. This is the list of outstanding companies I want to invest in for the long term. To reduce risk, I like to wait until they become undervalued first, then I like to buy their shares gradually instead of buying them all at once. For example, if I want to buy more Apple shares, I like to wait until the stock drops below my fair interest value estimate, then I will buy Apple shares gradually as long as it's undervalue. If you want this interest value calculator, you can download it in my Patreon blog. The link is in the video description. As of now, my plan is to buy more Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Tesla shares this year whenever they become more undervalued because I believe they are the best businesses with durable competitive advantage and increasing earnings. Here's the important part you want to know. For long-term investing, I always adopt a business owner investing mindset and not a stock trader mindset. Personally, I always see stocks as actual ownership of businesses. I don't see stocks as stock takers for trading and market timing. When I invest in stocks, I always like to invest as though I am acquiring the entire business. For example, if I like Apple's future prospects and I know it's an outstanding business with durable competitive advantage and increasing earnings, I like to invest in it as though I am acquiring the entire business and invest in it for many years. If the stock market does not open for the next 10 years, I would not mind at all. As long as the company is an outstanding business with increasing earnings and durable competitive advantage, the stock will perform very well in the long run. Contrary to what most people believe, Buffett said he and Charlie Munger are not stock pickers, they are business investors. 
Buffett wrote this in his latest annual letter to shareholders. Whatever our form of ownership, our goal is to have meaningful investments in businesses with both durable economic advantage and a first-class CEO. Please note particularly that we own stocks based up on our expectations about their long-term business performance and not because we view them as vehicles for timely market moves. That point is crucial. Charlie and I are not stock pickers. We are business pickers. So when will the market recover? Obviously, no one can predict when the market will bottom and when the market will recover. But if you look at Nasdaq here, you can see the current correction is almost as steep as the March 2020 correction and is comparable to the large correction in 2018. I've been investing for more than 12 years. Personally, I've been through several major corrections, including the 2008 world financial crisis. One important lesson I learned is never bet against America's economy. Buffett wrote this in his 2020 shareholder letter. In its brief 232 years of existence, however, there has been no incubator for omniscient human potential like America. Despite some severe interruptions, our country's economic progress has been breathtaking. Our unwavering conclusion, never bet against America. In the short term, at least through 2022 and 2023, I expect a high inflation rate and the US Fed's monetary policy tightening will continue to impact all growth stocks, especially companies that are not profitable yet and that do not have positive free cash flows yet. But in the long term, stocks that are outstanding businesses with increasing earnings and free cash flow growth will reach new highs again because it's always business earnings that determine the stock price in the long run. For example, if you look at my growth stock portfolio here, you can see I have many growth stocks such as Coinbase, Coupang, Sell. Salesforce, Netflix, Roblox, C Limited, Shopify, and Block. There are down more than 15% each. In my opinion, these are outstanding businesses, but I did make the mistake of buying them too early in 2020. I did not have enough margin of safety when I bought them. However, I'm not too worried about them because I expect they will all recover once the US inflation rate eases closer to the 2% target inflation rate. Also, I expect their increasing earnings will help them recover in the long run. The key takeaway is this, never bet against America. I believe the US stock market represented by the S&P 500 and Nasdaq will eventually recover because of US long-term economic growth. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial advice. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Investor channel and I will see you in the next video.